<laughs> Welcome to the Simply Joyful Podcast live with my special guest, Jennifer Fulweiler. Get ready to be encouraged. Well, hello, Jennifer, and welcome to the Simply Joyful Podcast Live. I am so thrilled to have you here today. I am so excited to be here. This is so fun. We'll talk about your book, Your your Blue Flame, but first I want you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself and who you are and all that good stuff, because I've got a story for you with your book. (laughs) My (laughs) coffee table experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, okay, so my name is Jen Fulweiler. I have six kids. I'm a radio host on Sirius XM, and I am a stand-up comic. Just finished a national stand-up comedy tour, sold out a whole bunch of places. It was a lot of fun, so Love I, it. I stay busy. So you wrote this book called Your Blue Flame, and it came to me in the mail, and it was sitting on my coffee table, and you and I have two totally different definitions of what a blue flame was, and oh my gosh, I died, because I'm like, wow, okay, she's a comedian. This is hysterical. Like, what a great way to talk about finding that inner passion (laughs) that ignites us. My husband walked by and he's like, seriously? Like someone has that as a book title? It was so funny. And so my daughter, we're laughing hysterically. And my older boys, we must have said it at some point because they knew what it was. But my eight-year-old daughter is like, well, what's a blue flame? And so my husband goes ahead and tells her, and we don't always, we call it the F word, but we, he's just like, well, it's when people light their farts on fire. And she just like fell to the ground <laughs> laughing hysterically. I'll have to add it in here. Look, I'm like crying, like ta- remembering it because it was so funny. Oh my goodness. But that's not what your book is all about. I had never heard the term blue flame except for this, but you had heard it differently. So will you please I think explain that to me? Told that. Okay, so this is breaking news for me. No one told me this. And, the, and you know, when you do a book title, it has to go through pub board at your publisher, like Zonderman, Harper Collins, like they all had to do this. How did nobody know? How have we all been so sheltered? that we never heard this. No. This is uh, this moment is the first time I am hearing this. And I've done a lot of publicity for this book and I bet other people had heard of it but they just didn't say anything. They're like <laughs> they're like what an interesting title. Why did she do that? People were probably I mean probably like me. People were probably thinking like oh like she's a comedian. <laughs> what a you know, funny way well, to put it. What I love too is that like you had a positive take on it. Like that's the funniest part of this for me that you were like oh. I love that analogy. For finding your gifts like and you thought like in all seriousness i'm like well lighting your farts on fire like that's that is like you know really connecting with your god-given passion like i love how you like you tried to go with it like what? i was rolling with it i was like there okay but i'm like if ann voskamp came up <laughs> like, that wouldn't fly as well <laughs> a comedian yes i can see that oh. working together <laughs> I love oh, it. this is like, I, I just, you oh. t- I'm going to text everyone I know as soon as we're done with the interview. Like, why didn't you tell me? I mean, that was a thing, like late eighties, early nineties. Like this is when people, like, I remember having friends were like, you know, oh, I totally blue flamed. And I'm like, what? And like, it's yeah. a verb. It's a verb. <laughs> no. It's, yeah. Blue flaming. That's it's a thing. It were, at least it was a thing. I'm, I thought everybody. I'm retiring to live the rest of my life in seclusion. <laughs> so if, if I have like a whole lot of extra sales in Southern California, I will know that, that it is yep. a regional term for that area. That's incredible. I mean, what an honor that I got to be the one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you got to break this to me. Thank you. No, I'm mad. Like that Christy Clover. Now, there's another term for blue flame, maybe less familiar to your listeners. Yes. Familiar concept is that it's a God-given gift that's something you're meant to do. And here's the key thing. It like fills you with energy when you use this gift. And we can't talk about this with a straight face. <laughs> but- you're not <laughs> 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 I'm just trying not to laugh as you're explaining it. I know, we're done. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's like God gives you, and now I'm like trying to make it like it could apply to either one. Like it fills you with explosive energy when when you use your blue flame. (laughs) This is the best interview I've ever done. This is I know, one of my probably top two. I don't know. (laughs) I've definitely never laughed this hard. Oh yeah. my goodness. I well, I've never had this hard of a time describing my book because I'm like, oh, if I say that. Like, 
you know, what is awesome is you start the book by explaining that you ran into a friend who hadn't seen you since you had this really big, crazy, like hot mess mom moment. And I love it because when I was reading it, I laughed so hard because I had a very similar moment, but it was with my mother-in-law. The kids had opened the door and I didn't know she was standing right yes. behind yeah. me. And I literally was screaming at the dog because I had just stepped in dog poop and we were rushing oh. out the door and she was oh. coming. Like, it was like hot mess moment. And I was like, one of those things where I like, I was screamed at her. I was like, all oh, the rage inside. It was just one of those mom, horrible, horrible moments. And it was like, all of a sudden I suddenly realized, oh gosh, she's right behind me. <laughs> So right, and she saw, and she heard yes. everything. Everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And so and bad. what led to that is like I'm not. I have no domestic skills. I mean, I'm an only child. My husband is an only child. So we didn't grow up with siblings. I didn't babysit. Wow. I didn't, yeah. yeah. I didn't. I didn't even think I'd have kids. I mean, when I was in my early twenties, I was like, I I don't think I'll have kids. I don't think I'd be good at that. And I ended up having six babies in eight years. And, and I'm a slob. I mean, like, I'm, I'm not good at anything domestic. And so there were a lot of moments, a lot like the ones that I describe in the book. And, and so, yeah, that, I, I was not, I struggled a lot in, in those years because I'm, I'm, I don't have any natural gifts for that kind of thing. Wow. Well, see, I'm an only child and my husband only oh, wow. has one sister and then we had five kids and his oh, sister wow. had four. Oh, wow. Very similar backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it is really interesting because it, there is that aspect of my parents divorced when I was four. So when we got married, I had no idea of what it looked like to have a healthy marriage. I had no idea of what it looked like to have more than one child, you know, yeah. and then I started with three boys and then we had two girls but that was just such a bizarre, like I was living in another planet. Cause I'm like, it was just like my mom and I, we were just like best friends and kind of doing this oh. mom daughter thing. And so it was really like the sweet time, but yeah, I had no idea, but right. you ran into your friend and she was like, you look different because now suddenly you went. And back then that moment was when you had three kids and now you have six kids and you're like thriving and she was blown away. So what happened between that moment of because I think a lot of people can can relate to having those hot mess, hot, horrible, crazy moments. But what has changed dramatically in that time? I, I mean, the the whole thing that changed, and which is what I'm writing about and talking about, was that I I thought that especially having so many little kids, and that you know, obviously having so many close together too. Like I needed to put a lot of focus into the full time momming, you know, kind, kind of thing. And, um, and, and also just to, you know, keep my house from falling apart. And, but, so I thought that there was no room for anything else in my life because how could there be? Because I don't have any extra energy. But what I realized is when I tapped into my God-given gifts, like the first thing I discovered was writing, I realized it gave me energy. Mm -hmm. I was a better mom. I was more available to my family. And I just had more energy to share when I tapped into that gift. And I used to think of, of those kind of things as taking away from the relationships in my life. And what I realized is they enhanced them. When I would get, you know, I had four kids under age five at one point. And when I wow. would get them all down for naps, I would make some time to like write on my blog. I had a blog at the time. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I... I would feel more energized, more ready to deal with the chaos of cooking dinner with kids screaming in the background and fighting. And I just, I had, it just gave me what I needed to get through. And it also just felt like I'm meant to do this. And it kind of sounds silly because what I was talking about at the time was blogging. I mean, this is not, you know, some grand, you know, a, amazing thing, but I would occasionally get emails from someone, like someone had, uh, like, I'll never forget an email I got that a woman had experienced a horrible tragedy in her family. There had mm. been a, su a sudden death and it was an awful thing. And she said, you know, you wrote a blog post that just made me laugh. And she said, I don't remember the last time I laughed. And I just Aww. want to thank you for that because I haven't had laughter in my life for a long time. And it was a stupid blog post. I, I must have spent like 30 minutes on it max. But, but it just made me realize like, okay, you know what? Maybe I can embrace the fact that I was meant to do this. And am I changing the world? No. Am I making money? No, I'm losing money on this blog. Like, so yeah. I, there's nothing that would impress anyone else about what I'm doing, but I think I'm meant to do this. I love it. That is so, it's important for us to do that too, to find those things. Cause 
I always laugh because I didn't start blogging or doing anything until we had our fifth child. And everyone's like, seriously, that's when you chose to do it. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, when we had two, I had started speaking a little bit and I was like, I love this. I want to do this. And then I just, it wasn't good timing. And the Lord just closed a bunch of doors. I lost my interest in it. And we had three more kids. And then for some reason, it's like, all right, now I have a baby, you know, a fifth yeah, baby. Right. let's do this thing. <laughs> uh, isn't that and, funny how that works? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and we were talking a little bit before that it was really interesting for me because I started blogging. I was like, this is fun. And I ended up like blogging about things I didn't even think I was going to blog about. I kind of went into it thinking, cause I wanted to write this, this book be, over my shoulder is it's called MOM master organizer of mayhem. And so I really wanted to write the book. So I started doing little chapters, but then I started adding all these recipes and then my girlfriend was into YouTube. And so I was like, I, that'd be fun. And then live streaming started happening with Periscope. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was just really fascinating to see how God can bring different things together. And you're right. Like, you have to, I think it's important for women and men to find those things, even in the midst of life that will bring life and energy into whatever it is. And, and that's one of the things that I know is in, you, you talk about in your book that you don't have to like do this big life change. So can you share a little bit about what that looks right. like practically for families? Well, I think that the example you gave is a great example that you started playing around with YouTube, with Periscope, with some of the live streaming stuff. And, and what I want to emphasize about your story is you didn't launch some massive project. It sounds like, I mean, you were just playing around, like just yeah. seeing what would come of it. And even though if you didn't have a million people on your Periscope or whatever, or on, you know, your first ever YouTube video, yet you still had this feeling of, yeah, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be right now. This is really making me feel like the truest version of myself. And that's what we're looking for with this concept is that you, you just have this moment where things kind of click. And even if it's not yet successful from an outside perspective, and, and maybe it will never be super glamorous or impressive to other people, but you feel like the truest version of yourself when you do it, that's what you're looking for. And yeah, you don't, like you said, you don't have to go quit your day job. You know, if there's someone mm -hmm. who's listening, maybe they don't even have kids, but they have a full-time job and that's what they're doing right now. No, you don't have to run off and do this. If all you can make time for is 10, 20 minutes a week, that's great. Start there. And you will find that you can look forward to that throughout the week. Like with all my little kids, there were times when working on, on this kind of work that really made me come alive, I was maybe getting an hour a week. And that is just all I could do because I was so maxed out. But that helped give me the energy to get through tough days that I would say, you know what, day after tomorrow, I'm going to have a little time. I've got a sitter coming for a short amount of time and I can write that blog post. I can tap in to, to this, this God-given gift that I love using. And that would really give me the energy to get through some hard days. So the, the advice I always give people, and by the way, I have a free ebook right now that people can get. Yes, if they want to get that. started. Totally free, instant download, yourblueflame.com. People can go get that. But it, what I emphasize in that is do something right now. J just start, try something. And if you find that it's frustrating and you don't enjoy it, try something else, try a different angle on it, but just do something and don't be afraid to do something small. Don't, don't get caught up like, like you, if someone thinks maybe video could be this, you know, God given passion for them. Don't get caught up like, well, I've got to get my artwork for my YouTube channel. I've got to get the marketing team in place. No, just put your phone on selfie mode and try doing a one minute video. Just start there. Yeah. And because it, it takes a while to find your voice and just to kind of right. get comfortable with it and all that. And what is interesting is I, I mean, part of my little story is that I had a girlfriend at one point tell me, she was like, you know, you're really good at this, like this blogging thing and, you know, these videos, but you, you need the consistency. Like, you know, I think she was like, Michael Hyatt said, yeah. you need to be consistent when you're blogging. And I remember just being like, you know what? I do what I do when I can do it. And God's going to have to just grow what I'm doing. You know, I felt like it's my loaves and fish, you know, fish story where it's just, I, this is all I can hand. Like I am yeah. putting my heart into this and well, okay. So it's been like, Hey, one week I'm like two videos. woohoo, And there's like three months, <laughs> another right. video. Um, well, it's not the best business practice, but that's what I enjoy. Well, I think it depends on where you are in your life. And that's another thing. I actually did a whole chapter about this in the book. And I think it might be one of the more impactful ones because I talk about the idea of finding the tempo 
of life Ooh, that works yeah. for you. And this is not talked about enough because everyone says, hey, find your passion and then hustle, 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 make it a side hustle, monetize it, yes. bring in that money, get that money. And that is not where everyone is. And some people are like, I want to make a couple of bracelets and give it to friends. And like, I'm not trying to start a jewelry empire like that's, and then they feel sometimes their messages like, you're letting fear hold you back. And they're like, I really think I'm not. I think I just like, I just want to make a couple of bracelets and call yes. it a day. And, and, and so I think it's important to always gauge what tempo of life works for you right now. So I was just saying for me, like when my kids were four kids under age five, five kids under age seven, that sort of thing, writing a couple of blog posts a week was about it for me. And I didn't have deadlines and I didn't, you know, that, that just wasn't where I was. But now I just finished planning. So I self-produced my stand-up comedy tour. I did it myself. I, I love it. called theaters. I would, I would Google like a rent theater in Columbus, Ohio, and I would cold call them. And I would be like, can I rent your theater? And they'd be like, what? Is this? Nobody does this. Like, who are you? I, I self-produced the entire thing. And, um, and I did that while having a two hour daily, every weekday, two hours live solo talk show, where it's just me. It's talk radio. Um, wow. so that is a very, 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 high tempo, like a very, a very fast tempo of life. Yes. And that's what works for me right now. I like being mm -hmm. challenged. I like setting big deadlines. I like hustling right now, but that's not where I was eight years ago. Like that was not the right tempo for me eight years ago. So I think it's very important that as people are discovering their gifts simultaneously, they ask what, what tempo should I be living at? Am I supposed to may, I do think it is some, the, the call for some people, maybe you are supposed to build a business and give people some much needed employment opportunities right now. Maybe that yeah. is your call, but maybe your call is to just have this be a little something that you do a couple hours a week and, and that's it. So you have to discern that too. No, absolutely. I think that is so important because it's, I feel like it doesn't have to be big or nothing. <laughs> Right, you know, right. and that's important for people to realize because you do what you, what you can do. And, and yet at the same time, it's like, you have to find how it fits for you and everyone's story is going to look totally different. So mm -hmm. your story is not going to match mine. Mine's not going to match yours. And that's okay. Cause God works in everybody's life differently. Um, so one thing that I love is that you've done a great job of incorporating your family. So can you talk a little bit about how you pull your family into what you do? One of the things is I, I'm just very honest with my kids about what's going on. There's a real free flow of information in our house. I mean, they know how much money I made on each event in the tour. Like I would seriously come home and be like, all right, the gross margins on this one, you know, we're not so much where we wanted them to be. And, and see, I come from a culture where you never talk to kids about money because that that might stress them out and you have to be the perfect parent where you shelter them and, oh, you know, we don't want our children worrying about this kind of thing. And, and I, I mean, I try not to stress them out. My husband and I both will say, hey, mom and dad got this, you know, we've always got a plan and we trust in God and, and all that. So within that context, yeah, I'll just tell my kids what's going on. And then the other thing is there's that great TED talk by Simon Sinek. I always think it's called start with why, but I, I forget what it's actually called. But if you Google Simon Sinek, start with why you, you'll find it. And he's talking in a business context here, but I think it's actually more applicable to families where he says, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And mm -hmm. again, speaking to businesses, he says the most successful businesses convey to their customers why like this great, bigger, grand vision and one of the things I always do with my kids and my husband does as well is we tell them our why. Here is mm. how much daddy is working right now. Here is how much mommy is working. Like I travel a lot. Well, not now, but I used to travel <laughs> a little bit. And, and I would always explain to the kids the why. Here is why I'm making this choice. What do you think about this? How is it working for our family? As often as we can, I take some kids with me when we travel, like when I filmed my stand-up comedy special, all six kids went up to Chicago to be part of the special. I brought them out on stage with me. And um, so I think my biggest tip there for people would, would be with anything you do with, whether it's just pursuing your passion as a, something you do on the side, whether it's, it's a big career or something in between, know why you're doing this. Take that time with yourself or with your spouse to discern that. And then tell your kids, what's your mission? Why, why are you spending time on this? Why does it matter? Uh, 
and and that makes a big difference in terms of your family being feeling part of what you do. I love it. So great. Well, thank you so much for jumping on and explaining. See, we, we made it. We did it. We yeah, yeah. got behind oh, my crazy memorable. story. Oh, I'll never forget this interview. Oh, for I love sure. it. It's I am going to be forever seared in your heart. <laughs> it's amazing. This was a life-changing interview for me. That's right. Oh, my goodness. Well, Jennifer, where, how can people connect with you? Where can they find your book? All that good yes. stuff. Well, my favorite place to hang out, I'm just, I'm on Instagram all the time. I love the Instagram stories. I'm just constantly on Instagram. So for sure, connect with me there. Jennifer Fulweiler is my handle. Don't worry about spelling Fulweiler. If you can get Jennifer F-U-L, Instagram will be like, oh, oh yeah, okay, okay. I, I know who that you're girl. talking about. Yeah. There's one who's like <laughs> on here all the time. Like, yeah, 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 that's probably her. And then uh, yourblueflame.com is where you can find the book. I will put a content warning. This is not a how-to of how to light your car on fire. So that will be at the top of the page, <laughs> yourblueflame.com. I love it. Per Christy Clover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Christy. Hey. I should get an endorsement from you. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Ew. I'll write your next forward. Yes, <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> yes. So funny. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you. This was awesome. I think I got a nice little ab workout in this one. So. Yes. Oh man, me too. Well, I can't wait to see it. This will be a lot of fun to watch. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Jennifer. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Simply Joyful Podcast. Be sure to check out all the episodes available from the podcast by going to simplyjoyfulpodcast.com. Also, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube so you don't miss all of the other videos that we have coming your way. Have a great rest of your week, and don't forget to live simply and be joyful.